فإنه من يعش منكم فسيرى اختلافا كثيرا فعليكم بسنتي عليكم بسنتي ما تنشئون حزبا There is a question about burning the captives and the excuse of Qisas. One of the Ikhwani Khatibs here said that there is also evidence that Mu'adh ibn Jabal and Umar ibn Khattab burned captives. He further said that the scholars in Saudi simply aren't aware of the situation on the ground. هؤلاء القوم هم من أهل البدع ولا يخفى عليكم أن الأصل عند أهل البدع واحد وهو التعلق بالمتشابهات وترك المحكمات هذا الأصل الذي عليه جميع أهل البدع ما من صاحب بدعة إلا ويحتاج أن يستدل لبدعته فكيف يفعل؟ يتعلق بالمتشابهات ويترك المحكمات سلمنا معه أنه قد ثبت عن بعض الصحابة أنهم حرقوا بعض الناس وثبت عندك في السنة الواضحة الصريحة النهي عن التحريق بالنار أيهما تقدم؟ لماذا تركتم السنة الصريحة الصحيحة ولجأتم إلى آثار عن الصحابة الصحابة بشر يخطئون ويصيبون السنة محكمة السنة معصومة من الخطأ فكيف تتركون المعصوم وتذهبون إلى, المخطئ إلى الذي يخطئ ما هذا منكم إلى اتباع للهوى انظروا إلى علي بن أبي طالب أليس واحدا من الذين ثبت عنهم التحريق بالنار نعم بلى طيب لما حرق بالنار ماذا قال ابن عباس قال لو كنت أنا لما فعلت ذلك لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يحرق بالنار إلا رب النار فسمع علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه فقال كلمة دلت على أنه قد وافق ابن عباس فيما ذهب إليه رأيت كيف بشر يبلغهم النص ولا يبلغهم النص عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه كان ينكر المسح على الخفين تعلمون وراء سعد بن أبي وقاص يمسح عن الخفين فأنكر عليه كيف تمسح الخفين وهو عبد الله بن عمر الذي عرف بمعرفته بالسنة وتمسكه بها خفيت عليه هذه السنة التي من أنكرها اليوم فهو ضال مبتدع لكن ابن, عب... ابن عمر ما بلغه الدليل ما بلغه الدليل فلذلك أنكرها فلما أنكر على سعد بن أبي وقاص سعد بن أبي وقاص أخبره عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فلما أخبره عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال له اذهب وسل أباك عمر ذهب وسأل عمر بن الخطاب عن المسح الخفين فأخبره بسنية ذلك وقال له ما أخبرك به سعد فلا تسأل عنه أحدا بعده الأمر كان في بداية الأمر 
ممكن يخفى دليل يظهر دليل الصحابة يعظمون الأدلة ويمشون معها لكن ربما يخفى الدليل على بعضهم كما في هذه الصورة في بداية الأمر كانت هذه الأدلة ربما تخفى اليوم الحمد لله قد جمعت لأن المصنفات قد صنفت وجمعت أحاديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فالآن أحاديث المسعى الخفين قد انتشرت واشتهرت وعرفت عند الجميع فلا يسع أحد أن ينكرها في البداية كان معذور لأنه ما بلغه الدليل هكذا يكون الشأن في صحابة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فهم غير معصومين ربما يبلغه الدليل وربما لا يبلغه هذا علي بن أبي طالب ما بلغه فلما بلغه وقف عنده فكيف تستدلون بأصحاب, بأصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وتتركون سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الواضحة الصريحة أما ما يستدلون به من القصاص فذاك في القصاص ذكر العلماء جواز التحريق في القصاص مع أن المسألة نفسها فيها خلاف هل يجوز القصاص في محرم الله يعني من قتل شخص ب وهو يجامعه رجل جامع رجلا وقتله بالجماع هل يقال والله يقتص منه بجماع لا يقال هذا إذا القصاص جائز لكن فيما أحل الله لا فيما حرم الله هذا هو الصحيح مع, ذل... مع أن المسألة هنا مختلف فيها والأمر فيها إن شاء الله محل اجتهاد ما في مشكلة لكن قضيتنا نحن وين قضيتنا في أسير الحرب وليس في القصاص الذي يقع في بين الناس قضيتنا في أسير الحرب أخرج البخاري في صحيحه عن أبي هريرة قال بعثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بعث صورتنا نحن مع الخوارج الآن هي هذه بعثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بعث وقال لنا إن لقيتم فلانا وفلانا لرجلين من قريش سماهما فحرقوهما بالنار قال ثم أتيناه نودعه إن أردنا الخروج فقال إني كنت أمرتكم أن تحرقوا فلانا وفلانا بالنار وإن النار لا يعذب بها إلا الله فإن أخذتموهما لوها شوف كيف فإن أخذتموهما إيش أسرع فاقتلوهما ما تحرقهم بالنار نص واضح وصريح في مسألتنا التي نحن فيها لماذا تتركون المحكمات وتذهبون إلى المتشابهات لأنكم أصحاب هوى وبوب على هذا الحديث الإمام النسائي في سننه الكبرى قال النهي عن إحراق المشركين بعد القدرة عليهم كيف عاد عندما يكون الشخص مسلما وليس مشركا أصلا لا أنتم ترونه مسلم هم يرونه كافر طيب سلمنا لك بأنه كافر طيب أليس هذا في الكفار وبوب البيهقي رحمه الله باب المنع من إحراق المشركين بالنار بعد الإثار يعني بعد الأسر وقال البغوي رحمه الله في شرح السنة فأما تحريق الكافر بعدما وقع في الأسر وتحريق المرتد فذهب عامتهم يعني جميع العلماء إلى أنه لا يجوز وقال ابن قدام رحمه الله في كتابه المغني أما العدو إذا قدر عليه فلا يجوز تحريقه بالنار بغير غلاف نعلمه وقد كان أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه يأمر بتحريق أهل الردة بالنار وفعل ذلك خالد بن الوليد بأمره فأما اليوم فلا أعلم فيه بين الناس خلافا لأن أبا بكر وخالد ما بلغهم الدليل على التحريم 
هذه من عندي الأخيرة انتهى كلامه عند قوله فأما اليوم فلا أعلم فيه بين الناس خلافا وقال أيضا مثل ما قال ابن قدامة أبو الفرج ابن قدامة ونقله غيرهم أيضا إذا المسألة منقول فيها الإجماع على أعلى تحريم حرق الأسير الكافر فما بالك بالأسير المسلم وهذا نص حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الأسير الكافر قد ذكرناه لكم في صحيح البخاري وبعد ذلك ما بقي إلا الهوى نعم تفضلوا حفظ So the question, as you heard, is concerning ISIS burning a captive uh, alive and people uh, seeking to justify this with uh, some of the uh, evidence about some of the Sahaba uh, burning, uh, burning uh, captives. Sheikh Abdullah said that these people, people, ISIS that we're talking about, they are people of Bida. And uh, this is no secret to any of you. And what all of the people of Bid'a, all of them have, have in common, is that they all hold on to the mutashabihat and they leave, leave, they, leave, they leave alone the muhkamat. They hold on to what is doubtful and they leave alone what is decisive and clearly defined in the religion. There is no person of Bid'a except that he uses evidence to justify his innovation. We agree that it's authentically reported that some of the Sahaba indeed burnt captives. However, we find in the authentic Sunnah the prohibition of burning captives. So why is it that you're trying to turn away from the Sunnah which is authentic and use the example of some of the Sahaba? The Sahaba were human beings and they were not perfect and so we say that when you take this methodology turn away from the authentic sunnah and seek to justify your actions with some of the deeds of some of the sahaba you are following your desires we find that there's a prohibition a clearly uh, a clear prohibition for burning not anyone. Is this not the case? When we look at the statement of uh, Ibn Abbas, we see that Ali, he was one of the people who did in fact uh, burn, burn some people. He burned them to death. However, when Ibn Abbas, when he found out about this, what did he say? He said, were I, were I in your shoes, I wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have burnt anyone with fire. And then he cited the authentic hadith of the Master Ali Salatu Salam that no one burns with fire except the Lord of the fire. What did Ali anhu, say after that? He said a statement in which he agreed with Ibn Abbas that he had made a mistake. That he agreed. And this was how the Sahaba were. When some evidence came from them, when some evidence came to them from the Sunnah, they accepted it and they stopped. They accepted the evidence. Not like you people of Bid'a do when you hear some evidence and then you seek to beat around the bush and follow the mutashabihat, the doubtful matters, leaving alone the decisive matters. The Sahaba, they were human beings. And some of them hadn't been informed of certain statements, certain teachings from the Sunnah. Ibn Umar, for example, he had never heard the evidence of wiping over the khuffin, wiping over the socks. And he saw Sa'ad and Nabi Waqqas wiping over his socks. So he spoke out against him. He said, what are you doing? And Umar, Ibn Umar, anhuma, he was known for his knowledge and his implementation of the sunnah. However, this one sunnah of wiping over the socks, 
had been hidden from him. He didn't know about it. And so, and uh, by the way, nowadays, now that this is a well-known issue, wiping over the socks is well-known that this is an authentic sunnah. If anybody were to uh, deny this, then uh, they would be an innovator. However, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning, uh, in, in this time, the time of Sahaba, uh, some of the evidence was hidden to certain people from amongst the Sahaba. Ibn Umar was one of them in this case. He hadn't heard about the evidence for wiping over the socks. And so, Sa'd ibn Abi Uqqas, he said, go to your father and ask him. Talking about Umar ibn al-Khattab. Don't take it from me, go to your own father and ask him. So Ibn Umar went to his father, and his father told him that indeed you have been told the truth, so don't ask anyone about this issue after what you have heard. Being Sa'd, he told you what is correct. This was the stance of the Sahaba. They would hold in high esteem. They would revere the texts, the textual proof from the Quran and the Sunnah. At the beginning, during the lifetimes of the Sahaba, there was some of the evidence that not all of them had heard about. And so they were ignorant of isolated, isolated a hadith. However, in our day and time, the hadith have been gathered. They have been written down, they have been categorized, put in books, and chapter titles have been, have gathered them all together by, by topic. And so issues like wiping over the socks are, are no secret to anyone who wants to follow the sunnah. And no one has an, uh, has an excuse for being ignorant of the legislation of wiping over the socks to make wudu. The sahaba were not perfect. Some of them had not heard certain evidence from the sunnah. So how can you go and seek to use as evidence the actions of some of the Sahaba and leave alone the authentic evidence from the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasalam? You go and seek to use as evidence something that has to do with his loss, capital punishment for the crime of murder. Even though there's a difference of opinion when it comes to the, uh, when, when the scholars talk about the, the issue of uh, burning to death a murderer who murdered someone by burning them. We say that not all of the scholars agree that it's permissible even if a person murdered someone else by burning them to death. We do not say that all the scholars agree that the Islamic judge should sentence the murderer to be burned to death. No. We say that Islas, when it comes to Islas, people should be killed with the same thing that they killed with as long as that was a permissible means. If a man, may Allah protect us from such filth, if a man were to rape another man and in the process killed him, would you go say that the murderer and the raper should also be raped? That someone should come and rape him to death? Obviously not, because this is something that's not permissible in the religion of Allah. And so, we say that when it comes to Qisas, it's according to what Allah has made permissible. And when it comes to burning captives, this is uh, an issue of ijtihad. It's left up to uh, personal, uh, the personal description of the scholars, the bona fide, qualified scholars who are called upon to make a decision. However, the issue that we have is not with what to do with captives of war and not with Qisas when it comes to the punishment for uh, the crime of murder we find in Sahih al-Bukhari the hadith of Abu Hurairah he said that when Allah's Messenger sent us out on an expedition to fight and this is exactly what we're talking about here with the Khawarij the Khawarij, ISIS, they're claiming to be uh, fighting a, a jihad. And here, we're looking at a picture of what? Jihad. Where the Prophet wasallam he was sending out the Sahaba to fight jihad. He told those Sahaba that if you find so-and-so, he named two men by name from Quraysh. He said, if you find these two men, then burn them to death. When the Sahaba were getting ready to go out and go look for those two men, Prophet ﷺ called them back. 
He said, I had previously commanded you to burn so-and-so. But if you find them, just kill them. He said, what? Just kill them. Don't burn them. Just kill them. Previously, he told them to burn them. But then he changed his mind and told them, simply kill them. Do not burn them. And so, we're talking about the same exact issue here. What? Jihad. The permissibility of burning someone in jihad. And the Prophet ﷺ said here, specifically, do not burn someone in jihad. Clear text from the Master ﷺ. Sahih al-Bukhari. Authentic. So why is it that when it comes to dealing with captives of war, you want to leave alone the authentic evidence, and you want to try to beat around the bush and say that some of the Sahaba did it? You want to know why you do this? Why do you seek to do this? Why do you make evidence like this? Because you're following your desires. Sunan al-Nasai, we find that he has a chapter entitled The Prohibition of Burning the Mushrikeen, the Polytheists, after having captured them. And now the supporters of, of ISIS are going to uh, argue with us and say, uh, look, we were, you know, uh, you said you guys are, are talking about you know burning a Muslim. You're accusing us of, of, of burning a Muslim, and we don't see him as a Muslim. Let's say okay. Let's just you know for argument's sake, let, let's just say we're, we're not talking about a Muslim, the, the Jordanian that ISIS burned. Let's just say we're talking about uh, one of the mushrikeen who's not a Muslim. We have here a chapter, a whole chapter in Nasai, the prohibition of burning mushrikeen after having captured them. Al Baghwi said, Sharh Sun. The prohibition of uh, burning the disbeliever after he has been taken uh, as a captive of war. And likewise, the prohibition of burning the apostate. He said, the majority of them, or all of them, and he's talking about all of them, meaning who? The scholars of Islam. Say that this is something which is not permissible. He said what? al Baghwi said, what's not permissible? It's not permissible to burn a captive of war or an apostate, he said. And this is an issue that all of the scholars mutually agree on. Ibn Qudama and al Mughni said that the enemy, if he is captured, is not permissible to burn him. And there is no difference of the ulama concerning this that we know. We don't even know a difference of opinion concerning this. No captured, no a prisoner of war is allowed to be burnt. Say that, you might say that Abu Bakr, عن, that he burned some people when uh, the, the apostates. And Khalid ibn Walid, عن, he did likewise. And we say, this is Shaykh Ali Allah, saying that the evidence hadn't reached it. If they did this, then that means certainly if they would have known the evidence, the authentic prohibition of this, then they most surely would not have done this. This were the words of Ibn Qudama talking about this prohibition, and Abu al-Faraj Ibn Qudama said likewise. And so, this is an issue which is an issue of ijma'a. The prohibition of burning a captive is an issue of ijma'a. All of the scholars mutually agree that it is haram to burn a captive of war. It's not permissible. Even if that captive of war is a disbeliever. So what do you think about capturing a Muslim? And burning it. This is the hadith that we have from Sahih al Bukhari. Whoever denies it after that, after hearing this hadith, authentic hadith, is simply following his own desires.